Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to our video panels. I'm Muhammad Nur Iqmal bin Rashid with my research partner Siti Nur Rafika bin Rosli will present about a study on the influence of regular lifestyle on academic performance of UITM Srabantiga students. So, several students' poor habits are normalized and has becoming common among Malaysian students. Having a good lifestyle will definitely bring benefits towards their students' academic performance. Majority of the internet addicts in Malaysia are between the age of 15 to 24 years old, which represent 38%. Students' use of social media has influenced their study time, poor grammar, and incorrect spelling when socializing in social media. Next, multiple factors like irregular diet, excessive consumption of sugar, and lack of vegetable and food would contribute to lack of adequate nutrients and medical issues. There is an association between high teenage performance with low academic achievement. Thus, the purpose of our study is to examine the relationship between the regular lifestyle of students and their academic performance. Now we move to the next part, which is the research question and research objective. So, we look to the first research question, which is, does diet routine affect students' academic performance? Okay, it reflects to the research objective, which is to determine whether diet routine affects students' academic performance. Second, does social media regularity affect students' academic performance? The, the research objective is to determine whether social media regularity affects students' academic performance. And the third research question is, does physical activity affect students' academic performance? It reflects to the, to the research objective which is to determine whether physical activity affects students' academic performance. There are one independent variable, which is the academic performance, where we measure it using the CGP. The first dependent variable would be the diet routine. This dependent variable could be supported with a study by Lampo 2012 and reduced dietary fat intake were significantly linked to the student's performance. The second dependent variable, which is social media regularity, could be supported with a study by Raviza, Hamrick and Fenn 2014, where they stated any use of internet, particularly social media, were negatively connected with the student's learning and achievement. As for the third dependent variable, which is the physical activity, it could be supported by a research of Satisha et al. 2016, where the result indicated that physical and academic practices are proportionally linked and have a positive impact on youth education. Okay, now we look to the hypothesis. From this research, based on three dependent variables, we had developed three hypotheses. For the first dependent variable is diet routine. The hypothesis is there is a relationship between diet routine and student's academic performance. The hypothesis is there is a relationship between social media regularity and student's academic performance. As for the third dependent variable, there is a relationship between physical activity and student academic performance. In research methodology, I'll explain about a few elements. First, the research design. We use cross-sectional study and quantitative method. As for the unit of analysis, we evaluate the respondent individually among undergraduates from UITM Seremban Tiga. As for the sampling technique, we had chosen the probability sampling and used the stratified sampling throughout our study. As for the sample size, we had used the Cressy and Morgan 1970 table. According to the table, we had to choose 357 respondents. However, we purposely chose 365 students in order to increase the accuracy of results. As for the data measurement, the total question for independent variable will be one question where the data measurement is using nominal. And for the dependent variable, there are the total of 15 questions using the Likert scale from rating 1 to 5. For the data collection, we had divided the questionnaire into 5 main sections from section A until section E. As for the data analysis, for the respondent information, we use this frequency and percentage and other analysis that were used in the study is descriptive analysis, reliability test, normality test and also cross-step chi-square. Okay, now let's proceed with the findings, shall we? Based on our research, most of the respondents that we took for the sample are female with a frequency of 218 represent 59.7%. As for their ages, most of them are from 22 years old until 26 years old. 
and they represent 62.2%. Most of our respondents are Malay, with the frequency of 337, represent 92.3%. The majority of marital status of our respondent is single, with a frequency of 360, and the percentage is 98.6%. For their current economy, most of them are from the degree level, represent 77.8%. As we know, in UI Times Roman Digger, the largest faculty is FSPPP. So, most of the respondents are came from FSPPP with a frequency of 202, represent 55.3%. Okay, let's go to this for the findings. Most of our respondents are non resident and represent 70.4%. Next, let's go to the hypothesis testing to show the correlation between the dependent variable and independent variable. According to the result, the first and second dependent variable shows relationship with the independent variable where the value of p is less than 0.05. Therefore, the hypothesis for both of these dependent variables were accepted. However, for the third dependent variable, which is physical activity, the result shows the value of p with 0.139, which is more than 0.05. Therefore, the hypothesis was rejected. Okay, now we move to the implication and recommendation. First, it will create more awareness towards students on sufficient nutrition. As we know, insufficient nutrition will give a bad effect to their academic performance. Furthermore, they are not aware of the benefit on a healthy diet and how it affects their mental and physical health. So, we recommend for having diet management support. The university is encouraged to provide a multidisciplinary team specializing in health promotion that includes nutrition and physical activity programs to increase the awareness among the university students. As an example, the Ministry of Health and the Food Quality and Security Department BKMM functioning in securing the people from, from health hazards and fraud as well as in the food consumption under Food Act 1983. Next, students will be more aware and proper diet intake. If a human takes more than stated calories, it may lead to health complications. Hence, we suggest to spread about diet knowledge in higher institutions. Nutritionists also should contribute in arranging a proper diet schedule for the students in having a proper meal. For example, the Ministry of Health, with the cooperation with Jabatan Latihan Khidmat Negara, in monitoring diet and expose knowledge about diet intake for the PRK and training in ensuring they receive sufficient diet intake as well as nutrition food in maintaining them to stay healthy. Alright, next. It is proven that many of the patients are not aware enough on the importance of having physical exercises. As year by year, the rate of obesity among youth are increased. By having healthy and sufficient physical activities, the number of youth that would get diseases like obesity and high blood pressure could be reduced. Thus, our recommendation is use mass media to spread more awareness. We are suggesting the government to improve the way of spreading awareness through mass media. For example, one student, one spot, satu murid, satu tukar. Then introduced by our former Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Najib Mata Raza, this policy is to ensure the students become more active and encouraging them in getting achievement in sports. Adopting a new strategy to understand the recipe for success, which involves the learner, the teacher, and the content. Educational institution will use social media for positive things such as learning and knowledge sharing. This is the implication number four. So, we recommend social media platform as a student learning base. By, create, by creating pages to promote academic activities and avoid setback in academic performance. For example, island based in UITM. As any other higher institution, UITM has also provided an internet learning base, namely island. However, after MCO, the student need to frequently access the website as everyone is learning from home. The website will frequently cannot be accessed due to over limit of user. Therefore, the ITM should really improve iLearn to be compatible with the large amount of students. Students could develop the social networking sites and how this may impair the students' personal social academic performance as well as mental health. Hence, we as a researcher prefer to encourage the proper usage of social networking. The educational provider and government should encourage the proper usage of social media, internet, in getting better education access and facilities, and 
example, University Sign Malaysia USM students receive free 40 gig of data SIM card from YTL Foundation for in partner from learning from home. This is to support the online teaching that the online teaching and learning activities carry out. Let's go to the limitation and future recommendation. First limitation would be limited sample. As we know, the total of respondents for our research would be 365 respondents, which does not really represent the whole segment of students in Malaysia. The questionnaires were distributed among students in only one particular university which is UITM Serbantiga. We would suggest the future researcher to increase the number of respondents in order to increase the level of accuracy. Also, more students from other universities should participate as respondents as well, for instance, UKM, UM, USM, and other IPTA and private universities. As for the subsequent limitation would be the limitation regarding the quantitative study. By using the quantitative method, we had faced a problem of accuracy level of results. This is because we were depending on the questionnaire. Therefore, the respondent were having limited choices of answers. And also, the questionnaire might not provide the broad indication of the actual occurrence. We suggest the future researcher to use qualitative method. However, they would need to be given more time as compared to the quantitative study. The next limitation would be cross-sectional limitation. There are changes of the relationship that might not be noticed during the changes of time. Besides, the data was also not thoroughly analyzed. The students who were addicted to social media might be increased after the MCO. We suggest the future researcher to perform longitudinal survey. This survey would be done more than one time. Therefore, the accuracy of result would be increased too. Finally, we had come to the conclusion. As mentioned before, the purpose of our study is to find the relationship and correlation between the student's regular lifestyle and the academic performance. However, the result received that the diet routine and social media regularity definitely would give impact towards the student's academic success. However, as for the physical activity, it is not linked with the student's academic success. Basically, people who is not physically active could also score good grades. As the researchers for this study, we managed to provide new knowledge towards the society, particularly the students about the impact of not having proper diet routine, inadequate social media usage and also being inactive with physical routine. Finally, we could also provide new knowledge towards the current research, particularly in the context of students' academic performance. Thank you so much everyone for listening to our presentation.